Hello, sirs and mams, Mike1217 here, welcoming back to Let's Play Skyward Sword. And in this episode, guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna play the game! The first five episodes, they really didn't let us play. Okay, well, they did have us have some gameplay. It was mostly a tutorial part of the gameplay. Or, tutorial part for the gameplay. And, oh, we're gonna be getting this a lot. I might just cut these out. I was thinking about maybe cutting these out, but she doesn't give you any new information. I mean, she does, but she doesn't. I'll talk about Phi later. I'm really not in the mood to talk about Phi. This is Phi, by the way. I haven't really introduced her. This is the Navi character of the game. And Navi is pretty notorious to all Zelda fans as being extremely annoying. Um, anyone... You grew up playing Ocarina of Time. Just loathes Navi. But let me tell you something. If you loathe Na Navi, then you have not played Skyward Sword. You have not played Skyward Sword if you think Navi's bad. I'll talk more about Fi as we go and why I just really hate the character. <laughs> but let's, let's save that for another discussion. Right now, um, now that we are in our familiar green tunic, uh, finally. There's one thing missing. We need a shield. So now I can introduce to you the bazaar. This is where... This is a very convenient place where you can do just about anything in the game, including this. The fortune teller who just rudely interrupted me. I actually don't remember what exactly we can do with this, but I'm sure you can just get hints for how to get further in the game, so I'm not going to use this. Basically serves a similar purpose to the gossip stones. Uh, oh fuck, I forgot on the menu to, uh, man, I'm tempted just to go ahead and do that while I'm at the beginning of the episode. I think I am going to do that. Uh, I'm going to take that thing off the that thing off my HUD, so I'm going to exit my game really quickly and then I'll meet you back in here. Sorry about that. Okay, that took me way too long to figure out. I guess I really am not a pro at the game, because that's what the interface is called. Basically, what you want to do if you want to get rid of the, if you want to get rid of the, uh, the HUD is that you hit one on your Wiimote, and then right here in interface, you want it to be at pro. So that's how you do it. So anyway, now that I have that out of the way, won't have that crap off the screen. So that's nice. I really wanted that done for this video and beyond, of course, just because this is probably the point on where people are going to watch. This is what I suggested to people. Anyway, hopefully I have enough rupees for this. Uh, again, this is a bazaar. This is where is the convenient location in the game where just about every type of uh, uh, service that Link can access is it's found right here in the bazaar. You can get the potion shop, the main shop, uh, the item upgrade guy, which I'll go into later. How do I buy? I don't want to... How do I buy? I just want to buy something. I think you're actually supposed to go up to the actual item itself. Right up here. This is what we want. I don't think I'm going to have enough rupees for this, so... They might just go with 40. I have a feeling it's going to be 80, though. But yeah, there's all sorts of things in this bazaar. I'll, I'll do a... Okay, yeah, I have enough. I'll do a quick... Uh, tour of it. I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna waste too much time in it, but I'll give you a quick tour of it just so we have it out of the way because we will be visiting here quite a bit because of just how convenient it is. 
So yeah, right here, this is, of course, the main shop. This guy reminds me of the Happy Mask Salesman, doesn't he, to you? Like, just the way he nods his head and his eyes. Kinda creepy, actually. Let's stop talking to him. I still wish there was a way you can make text go by faster. Oh, well, I can still give you the mind button. I'm not gonna hit that button. Potion shop right here. Uh, I'll explain the different potions once I'm actually ready to start using them. Uh, this is the upgrade guy. Uh, upgrades is... Oh, actually, I do have to hit this button, too. You have to hit my so you can access your inventory, so that's how I get my shield. Maybe I should have not ignored that. That's how you actually equip the shield. Yeah, the shield is kind of a, a equipable item in a weird way. There are other items to be t uh, put into that menu later. This guy I'm not going to really worry about. Um, basically, what you do is with this guy... Man, the upgrade system, that's, that's a huge addition to this game. And it's going to take... Kind of that, that will take some going into as far as explaining. I guess yeah, you can fix your shield because your shield actually can get damaged in the game, and you can upgrade your gear. That's kind of the that's one of the main unique things of this game that sets it apart from other Zelda games, or one of, just just one of many unique things of this game is the ability to up, to upgrade your items, which is really cool. So, I'll definitely go into that as we get more items. Right now, we don't have anything to upgrade. Uh, that's pretty much it. There's also item check. Uh, we always have the fortune teller. Uh, item check, I don't know where item check is. Right here. This lady, you can, if you have an excess of items, which usually you shouldn't have to worry about, mostly on your equipable screen, like right here, you probably have an excess because you only have four spots. So, if you have an excess of items, they'll be sent here and you can just... It's basically like a bank for items, so you can have an excess of items there. That's really all I need to explain. I think it's a chest in here, actually. So... Shut up! I know what a chest is, I know how to open it. See, the, like... There really should be, like, a pro mode... Like, pro mode. I'm not talking about hero mode, which, by the way, I'll talk about hero mode in a bit. But there should be, like, just, like, a pro mode that has the pro interface already selected that has fine not pop up at all to tell you shit. That just seems like it makes more sense. Like, it, it, like it doesn't make the game harder, but it assumes that you know what you're doing. Like, it doesn't have all this tutorial stuff. Now, hero mode is something that I consider doing for this playthrough, no joke. Hero mode is a mode that you unlock after you beat the main game. And what it basically does is that it... Um, it doubles the damage enemies do, and it also, um, it also, I think it also takes away recovery hearts, like, n no recovery hearts would be available to actually recover your health. You can still use potions and stuff like that, but just, there's, nothing will drop recovery hearts. That's pretty much from what I understand. I might be wrong, and if I am, feel free to correct me. That's what hero mode is. I thought about toying with the idea of a six heart hero mode, but there's no way that's gonna happen. I also toyed with just doing hero mode like normally without the whole six heart thing, but I kind of want to stick with the concept that we're going with with this marathon, which is playing with the minimal marts. Yeah, the minimal marts, the minimal hearts that you start with. I I really am considering cutting this chick out. Really, like every time she pops out, I'm gonna cut her out <laughs> because I can explain this stuff myself. Um, I guess I can't explain this though. Um, actually, I'll explain map functions once we get down to the first region. This is where we're heading. It's the first region. This is something that we unlocked at the end of the last episode by getting that emerald tablet. So what you do is just fly down to the. Uh, where the light's coming out, and then eventually the game will tell you to dive, hit down in the D-pad, and you'll dive on in. Now, regions are something I'll explain a little bit later. We're gonna, we will have a cutscene, so, you know, sorry about that, but, I mean, you can't really expect the cutscenes to go away forever. It'll be a short cutscene. But, um... Yeah, the, the whole story aspect of this game is just something we're going to have to work around throughout the playthrough. Because I know some people watching this might just be into... Oh, I think it be. <laughs> I think that actually happens automatically, the sailcloth. That's what the sailcloth is for, is for having a safe landing 
onto the surface. And it's also recommended that you use it when you're out in the sky. I'll show you more about the overworld later, once we get the chance. I kinda just wanted to jump, jump right in, no pun intended, and uh, get started with the first region. This is kind of the introductory area to the first region. This uh, place, the sealed grounds, is actually pretty important, and uh, we'll be seeing this quite a bit in the game. And here's what's gonna happen every time we enter a new area. We'll have the map have a nice animation there. I like that. And we'll zoom in. Yep. And can I get out of this? No, it's just it's freezing me on it. I just wish you could skip the text faster. <laughs> get used to hearing a clicking noise. That's me mashing A to skip the text, even though it would never work. So here is a uh, I haven't actually explained these. This is a bird statue right here. And normally you can interact with these. Um, I was able to interact with uh, a couple of them at Skyloft. And what you do, what you use those for is for saving your game and they're also used for warp points. I'll explain those once we actually start using them. Here's our first enemy, Dekubaba. Uh, if you pay attention to the way their mouth is open, that's how you have to slice and vertical for this one. This is the first one to go horizontal for. And I believe coming up here we have side-by-side -side ones. Yeah, right over here. And one of which will have a vertical uh, opening. The other one will be horizontal if you bash your shield out. That's what I just did right there. I bashed my shield out and and I uh, stunned him. That's how I was able to kill that second one. Your shield can be your best friend in this game. If you're not very comfortable with the motion controls, make use of your shield and just abuse it. Here is a, a cutscene, so I'll be quiet for this, of course. This game really does do a good job with this uh, cinematics, but I still, you know, to tell you the truth, I still think Skyward, or not Skyward Sword, uh, Twilight Princess has the best uh, cinematic quality, and it doesn't have to overuse the cinematics in order to tell the story like it does in this game. I, but I feel like that's an unfair thing to say, though. I think I do have to pull her out for this. Or will I have to? I just feel like you have to talk to her in order to open up what we're getting into. We want to be able to get into this door, right? Maybe not. See, like again, the it, it, it's gonna reek <laughs> reek with with the uh, inexperience of this place with me not knowing what to do. Again, this is my only my second time playing the game, so forgive me for any times where I get lost. I will cut out pointless wandering. Here I can get a bug, but I don't like. Really, I don't care about these bugs. I, we don't care about them. I'm not even gonna explain them because I don't care about them. Uh, I guess I just want to keep going here. I don't think we're gonna have any enemies though. Man, I don't want to get lost right away in the first area. But here's a good demonstration of how uh, the stamina fruit kind of function. Again, they replenish your stamina as you're running, and if you Keep an eye out for him while you're running and run into him. You can keep a continuous uh, run going, but of course, once it gets low, it'll start beeping, and that's when you know you might want to be careful and slow down. What the hell do I do? I can climb this. Maybe I should have paid, <laughs> paid attention to what Fi said. Maybe she told me something important that I need to know. Maybe I do need Fi after all. You can make fun of me for it. 
still. I do like exploring this area. It is kind of cool looking. That's my excuse for getting lost. I'm just exploring. It's cool looking. I'm not stupid. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> cough, cough. <sighs> Shit. Maybe, maybe you should want to jump back. I think you want to jump down to the middle, actually, to the very bottom middle. And uh, the sailcloth is available anytime, by the way. So if you want to jump off a high ledge, uh, just make sure you you remember to use B to pull out your sailcloth. That's a good way of taking shortcuts. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to come down here. Do I have to fight this thing though? There's gonna be there's gonna be a, a frequent boss fight in this area. And just so you know, but I don't think I have to do it right now, do I? I, I shouldn't have to. Man, I just wish I could skip text fast. So here we have to do a skyward strike in this thing. That's what this mysterious voice is telling us to do. So let's get it ready. And shoot forward, that didn't work. <laughs> Maybe I just have to... I'm pretty sure that's what I have to do. I guess I just wasn't close enough. And that will open up these vents, so that's gonna be convenient. That's how we can easily get back up. Shut up! Shut up, shut up, shut up! <laughs> and this is gonna happen- oh my god. I almost wanna do like a counter for how, how many times she comes out and I just get, go mashing the A button at her. I can explain this again. Nah! Don't explain it. At least they give you the option to turn down explanations. So, what just happened there, actually, is we gained our dousing ability. So, what is dousing, you might ask? Well, if you hit the C button, uh, that's just plain looking up. Oh, you hold down C, and then you select something, and this is your dousing menu. These are different things you can douse for, so I'm going to select Zelda. It's basically like a dog, it really is kind of like a dog getting a scent for something and then searching it down. That's really what it is. And it's basically something that that shows you if you're close to your target or not. You can see now my target's flashing a little bit and there's a bit of an arrow on it pointing in a direction so it show it basically shows you a direction of what you're looking for. That's basically what dousing is. It's a way of telling you you're hot or cold. So there's a good way of looking at it. And and you'll be using dousing very often in the game. It can be very helpful. And, uh, yeah, so let's climb on up to the top. I think that door that I was... Ooh, dude, the sailcloth, damn it. See, again, the sailcloth is very, very useful. I'm glad it's in this game because it takes away any kind of, uh, health penalty for trying to take a shortcut and jumping down from a high spot. That's something I always like to do in Zelda games, is take shortcuts by jumping from high places. And a lot of times I'm forced to, um, to take the damage as a penalty. However, in this game, you can pull out your sailcloth and not take damage. It's kind of like how in Wind Waker, where you can do, where you can kind of do the same thing with the Daken Leaf, if you remember to. So, I'm kind of getting lost, obviously. Okay, I'm in kind of the right spot. Just roll our way <coughs> forward. Yeah, this running definitely, definitely helps. I'm so glad this is in this game. I almost get spoiled by it, too. Um, like, trying to play Zelda games that don't have running in it. It just it feels weird not being able to run. I feel like I'm spoiled by it. Like, I, just, I, I feel neutered whenever I, play, whenever I play other Zelda games that don't have running in it. So let's enter here, and I'm actually gonna. Well, there's gonna be cutscene. Not really a cutscene, but we're gonna meet somebody here. I'm thinking of en ending this episode pretty soon because we're at a good stopping point. This isn't really much of a cutscene here. We're just gonna meet somebody. I think I will stop right here. So um, next time on Let's Play The Legend of Zelda: Skyward Sword. We will uh, see what exactly awaits us here in the sealed temple. So this has been Mike127 and I will see you next time.